Occupation? No occupation. Housewife? Yeah, housewife. All right. And mother? Yes. No, thank you. I don't think a woman should smoke. You'll excuse me saying it. Yes, I'll excuse you it's now. It's not very feminine. How long have you been married for, Mrs. Attinger? Nine years and four months. I see. And 12 days. I see. And you have three children? Warren Jr. He's eight. Alan, seven. And Trudy, she's six. That's all. When did you begin to suspect you were losing your husband's affection? I suppose when he stopped batting me around the place. When was that? Eleven months ago. March 14th. He struck you? The first time? He broke a tooth. Uh, my tooth. I see. Upper left molar. And how often? It's capped now. You can't even notice it. Good. Now let's start with the day of the accident. Oh, there was no accident. I wanted to shoot him. Suppose we decide later just what you wanted to do. <sighs> silly. The difference between ten years in prison and freedom is not silly, Mrs. Attinger. Call me Doris. Pay attention to what I'm saying. I don't care what happens to me. Do you care what happens to Warren and Alan and Trudy? Yes, I, I do. I, I want to go home. It couldn't you fix it that I could go home? Not right now, but we're working on it. Here. I promised the kids I'd take them to Coney Island tomorrow. Yes, you drink that. Now, you would help us very much if you could reconstruct the day. All of yesterday. Well... First thing in the morning... I woke up. Yes. And then I see that he hasn't slept at home. And you were shocked and surprised? No, not shocked. Not surprised. He was used to not doing that. Come home. <laughs> Did you ever question his behaviour? Certainly. Did he offer any explanation? <laughs> Oh, certainly. He said... Shut up and mind your own business! I see. <laughs> but yesterday, I was worried. No. Not worried. Mad. Yeah. I was mad. You want to know why? Why? Because it was the fourth night in a row that he didn't come home. Yeah. And that made you angry. You sure? See, it was becoming a habit. So, I sent the kids to school. And I went and bought the gun. Where? This little hawk shop that I know. I bought the gun and they gave me a book on how to <laughs> free. Had you decided by this time exactly what you planned to do? I'll tell you the honest truth. I didn't make any plans. 
I did everything like it was a dream. I watched myself, but I couldn't control it. Like a dream. Yeah, that's good. Now go on, Doris. And then, I got hungry. <laughs> when? <laughs> After I bought the gun. Yeah? So I went to this hamburger place. <laughs> I had two rare and a lemon meringue pie. And then? <laughs> and I was still hungry. <laughs> oh, I walked around and I was talking to myself saying, don't be foolish. <laughs> and then? Uh, and then I called up Warren. He was coming up to his lunch time then. I said, I want to meet you. Something important to talk about. Can we meet for lunch? Uh, he said, no, naturally. So I says, are you coming home later? He said, what for? I said, well, don't you live there no more? And he said, don't be bothering me at the office. You want me to lose my job? Loud. <sighs> and then he hung up. And what did you do? Uh, I went for a coffee. Where? To where he was. Oh, he didn't see me. The place was crowded. The buffet exchange. So I bought two chocolate nut bars and I waited outside his office all afternoon. Then I ate those candy bars. And I waited for him to come out. And then I followed him. And then I shot him. And after you shot him, how did you feel then? Hungry.